In this video, I will be putting my hand into some liquid nitrogen. Warning, I am a professional chemist with over 25 years of experience in using liquid nitrogen. Do not try this experiment on your own. Liquid nitrogen is colder than the coldest weather event ever recorded on Earth. It's about the same temperature as the surface of the planet Neptune. The temperature of liquid nitrogen is 77 Kelvin on the absolute temperature scale. That's equal to minus 196 degrees Celsius or minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll do an experiment here to show that liquid nitrogen is cold enough to freeze a hot dog in a short period of time. Why would I be willing to put my hand in something that is capable of freezing a hot dog? Well, I'm betting that a property called the Leidenfrost effect will keep my hand safe, so long as I don't keep my hand in the liquid nitrogen for too long. To start learning about the Leidenfrost effect, let's heat this steel sphere for a short period of time and then place it in some water. In this case, the water quickly cools the sphere back to room temperature. Now let's heat the sphere until it glows orange hot and try the experiment again. Well that's curious. In this case the steel sphere is hotter but it hasn't yet caused the water to boil. If you look closely you'll see a layer of gas that surrounds the steel sphere. That's insulating the sphere from the water. Let's view the hot sphere underwater close up and in slow motion to get a better idea of what's going on with the Leidenfrost effect. The Leidenfrost effect comes into play when a liquid contacts a surface much hotter than its boiling point, just like what's going on here with this hot sphere and the water. When this happens, the water hits the hot surface and boils really fast, so fast that it forms a layer of gas around the hot sphere. It looks like a bubble in the video that you're looking at. That bubble is a layer of gas that protects the hot sphere from the liquid water. The vapor barrier protects the liquid from the hot surface and makes it so the liquid doesn't even touch the hot surface. The steel sphere does cool slowly until finally... Let's watch some super slow motion video of this process. At this point, the steel sphere is hot enough that the protective vapor barrier has formed around the steel sphere. This is the Leidenfrost effect. The steel sphere continues to cool. At some point, it's no longer hot enough to support the vapor barrier. Water rushes in, collapsing the vapor bubble. This allows the water to make contact with the sphere, which is still pretty hot. This contact rapidly cools the sphere and also causes a lot of water to boil. The entire process of vapor bubble collapse takes much less than a second to happen. In this super slow motion video, we can view the Leidenfrost effect in a slightly different way. Here, a drop of water has been placed on an extremely hot surface. When the water droplet touches the hot surface, some of it boils away, forming a layer of gas beneath the droplet. The water droplet rides on this continuously formed gas layer, much like an air hockey puck rides on a layer of gas across an air hockey table. Now my hand is at a much higher temperature than the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. So if I immerse my hand in liquid nitrogen, the Leidenfrost effect should take over and a protective barrier should form around my hand, as long as I don't leave it in too long. Mm. 
Huh? All right, here we go. Nice. Once again, we captured some super slow motion video of the process. Here's my hand entering the liquid nitrogen. If you look carefully, you can see a lot of vapor around my hand. Bubbles form all the way around my hand, insulating it from the very cold liquid nitrogen. When I did this, it felt kind of cool, but not nearly as cold as I expected. And when my hand was removed, it was completely dry.